today I want to talk just a little bit about kind of what makes the phone ring <laughs> for you as a bass player and what I've found that to be. Um, one of the things I share in my clinics a lot is this whole idea of if you distill this whole bass playing thing down to this one objective or skill set, um, I found that it's this. If you um, can be given the drum groove and the chord progression and can immediately come up with 15 or 20 different bass lines, each of which would work with that drum groove and be appropriate depending upon the context. So is it a rock thing? Is it reggae? Is it funk? Uh, you know, is it jazz? Whatever. If you have that vocabulary rhythmically, harmonically, and sonically, and can execute those lines with decent time, feel, and phrasing, um, you know, you have decent gear, uh, transportation helps, phone maybe, uh, and maybe just as important, but it's a whole other clinic, is, uh, you know, that you're not a drag to hang out with. <laughs> but if those things are together, your phone will ring as a bass player. I have never been hired based upon my ability to tap or to play artificial harmonics. And um, I would venture to guess that neither have any of you. Uh, that's just not why we're there, you know. Um, that may be what we get to do during that two minutes a night that everybody else walks off stage and we get our solo, or if we're leading our own bands and there's a bunch of bass players out there, you know, you maybe have a little bit more leeway, but generally speaking, it's the ensemble stuff and having the vocabulary and just the right feel um, that is gonna win out every time. Um, so part of that, to me, is developing the ability to emote on your instrument. A big part of that is having within your, your technique, your physical approach to the instrument, um, all the phrasing stuff, dynamics, note duration, slurs and hammers, vibrato, the register in which you're playing it, all the things that help it convey something on an emotional level. And um, I think it's imperative that your music convey something on an emotional level. I'm not talking about emo emotional manipulation, but I am talking about getting it from being an intellectual thing to being a heart thing. Um, and I've I've been thinking about this a bunch because, you know, as I listen uh, to music and, and I go through my playlist, invariably the stuff that stays in my playlist is the stuff that moves my heart. It's not usually the stuff that moves me intellectually. That stuff may sit there, sit there on my playlist for a little bit, but pretty, but pretty soon it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I'd rather listen to the stuff that makes me want to jump up and down or scream or, or cry or whatever, you know. So uh, having the emotional component in your playing is a big part of it, but in addition, having a broad range of music that you listen to and you have within your grasp. I'm talking about different genres of music. I encourage you to not to be a musical snob, and I'm speaking as somebody who used to be, but there's so much diversity in music and so much amazing, uh, there's just amazing stuff out there, and you're selling yourself short if you, uh, if you don't immerse yourself in that, you know? Um, everybody's got their favorite style of music or you know, two favorite styles of music, as the old joke goes, you know, you like country and Western. Um, there's a drum hit there. Um, but, you know, uh, bottom line is that, uh, especially as a bass player where you have a lot of opportunities to freelance and to sub in different situations, where you could be playing country one night and hard rock the next night and jazz the next night and, you know, reggae the night after that, it's awesome to have a, a, an understanding of what uh, harmonically, sonically, um, and rhythmically are the idioms of different styles of music. So anyway, um, let me do a little bit of playing. And what I wanna kinda uh, demonstrate today is the whole idea of having the ability to tweak your line and um, evolve it based upon the suggestions or requests of the producer or the director, uh, music director. Um, and that really ties into what I've just talked about, you know, having the phrasing together and having a broad vocabulary of different styles of music. Those are big things that kind of fill your, your musical bag um, and give you uh, a fairly broad palette from which you can, you can uh, apply the paint or whatever, right? So this is basically an A minor seven vamp over an eighth note drum groove, okay? Here we go.
So there's all sorts of different ways you can go. And um, really the big thing is in, in music, there are very infrequently right and wrong choices and much more frequently, uh, you know, more effective and less effective musical choices. And those, uh, you know, the difference is sort of a subjective thing, but it's also informed by uh, listening to a broad range of music and listening to people who do that really well, you know. And when you hear music that moves you uh, deeply, then, you know, listen to it sort of analytically and find out what is it about the phrasing, what is it is about the note choices and all of that, what is it about it that, that makes that emotional impact. And then uh, sort of, you can start running thing th things through that filter. But anyway, um, just a few thoughts for you. If you'd like to study with me, by the way, um, I have an instructional website called artofgroove.com. I uh, hope you'll come and visit me there. Um, it's, a, it's about the lowest price, <laughs> best value on the internet in terms of, uh, of music education. And um, I, I deliberately tried to price everything as low as possible to make it where money is not ever uh, like an impediment or an obstacle for people wanting to study music. So anyway, um, but otherwise find a good teacher in your area. Um, and uh, also please drop by normstockton.com and I'm on social media and everything else. So uh, please keep in touch, but God bless you. Hope to see you soon. Take care. Mm -hmm.